Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, well, I thought I'd start with winding some gate drive transformers. Now, at the moment, these are all just experimental transformers. Now, you're not going crazy. You do see five. And as you probably remember, I bought four. But this one here is a good example of the wrong type of coil. In fact, that one is out of my old solid state tester coil. You know, the one that blew up. In fact, it's still got the remains, the charred remains of a couple of resistors on there, so... Yeah. Now, this one has been wound in the traditional way. This is wound by twisting the wires around each other and then winding them around the core. This one has been done in a different way. This one has been done in an interleaved way. So we'll see how well that works. It looks like there's more turns on this one, but there, is, there isn't. These are both 10 turn cores. It just looks like there's more on this one because of the way it's been wound. Same goes for this one here. This is, all, well, actually this is a 12 turn core, but it's wound. It's wound the same way this one is. I keep trying to put this in the camera shot and my hands on the camera, on the viewfinder, move in a different direction to how I think they're going to move in real life. That's kind of confusing. Anyway, this one here. Now this one has two primaries and four secondaries. And it's been wound in the same way that this one has. It's been wound in the interleaved way. And sometimes when you make a gate drive transformer, Having two primaries is better than having one. And finally, we've got this one, where I've taken a piece of mouse cable from an old dead mouse, an old dead USB mouse, and I've wound that around the core because that is also something that can work. Anyway, enough waffle. Let's see how well these perform. Okay, so I've built a little high-frequency square wave oscillator here that we can test the cores with. So. First I'm going to test this one, so I'm going to connect the scope to this core, like so. Turn on the oscillator. Sorry about the noise outside, I don't know what's going on out there, but still. Let's just connect that up. And finally connect this up. And as you can see, we're getting a pretty nice square wave there. Okay, yes, you can see a little bit of droop, but um, that's mainly because of the chip. It was never designed to drive a pulse transformer directly, so you can expect that, but... As long as the waveform looks nice and square and we don't see any other nasty stuff in it, we're pretty much okay. Alright, so I'm connecting the scope to the, to the other one. This is the one that was interleaved winding. Sorry, that is interlent winding. Interleaved winding. I will get my words out. So let's compare how well this one works. We should see the same. And in fact, we do. And I may be wrong, but I think the waveform from this one is just a little tiny bit cleaner than what we had with this one. Alright, so let's see how this one performs. So connect this one up to the scope. Connect up my two primaries. As I'm trying to connect the two primaries, I'm trying to do this without shortening anything else. I'm trying to do this without my big fat ugly head getting into the shot. I know you see that in the intro for the video anyway, but still. I've gotten progressively uglier over the years. And there we go, look at that. I'd say that's working even better than these little cores did. We've got an almost flawless square wave there. I know at the bottom it's ramping quite a bit, but... Now finally... This one here that's been wound with mouse cable 
And I've seen people use all kinds of cable to do this kind of method of winding a gate drive transformer. Ethernet cable seems to be a pretty hot choice for these, but I've used mass cable. So let's connect one of the outputs to the transformer, I mean the scope. Okay, now let's connect up the thing. I mean the oscillator. We can see how well this one performs. Now, as you can see, that is also pretty good. It's not quite as good as this one is, but it's still, you know. So, what happens if we use a core that is totally unsuitable? Well, that's what we're going to see right now. So, this is one that was wound on a core that isn't suitable. It did work, but not as good as it could have done if I'd have used a better core. So, uh, this is the scope lead. Connect this one to the scope. Like so. Now connect the other end to the chip. And look at that. It's ringing excessive drope, it's a horrible spiky waveform, it's got ring in it, it's all ugh. It's horrible. Okay, so I've been building a gate drive circuit and it's I I show you how gate drive work now. Alright, I'll stop talking in a stupid voice. I've put the gate drive transformers in. I mean the gate drive ICs in. We got a little gate drive transformer here, connected up to a couple of MOSFETs. And you might have also noticed that I've put the voltage regulators in so each part has its own dedicated supply. So we've got one voltage regulator here, another one here, and another one here. So let's see what kind of a waveform we get. And there we go. It's not perfect, but uh, I think that will do. I mean, we've got just, you know, we've got a little bit of overshoot there and uh, a bit there as well. So let's see if anything's getting hot. Test the diodes, the zeners. Mm. Just a tiny, teeny, weeny, weeny bit warm. Some resistors. That's about the same. Transformer. Stone cold. Regulator. I'll just test one of them because they're both going to be about the same. It's a little bit warm. I'd say just a hair away from needing a heatsink. And the chip. Hmm. Pretty much stone cold. Okay, so next thing to do, let's see if this can power four MOSFETs. I'm just using some IRFP 840s as a dummy load at the moment. Okay, so now here is a test with four MOSFETs and two gate drive transformers. And although the wiring is absolutely hideous, I mean, just that, it's absolutely blur, check out the waveform. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, yes, not perfect, but, I mean, you're never going to get a perfect square wave. That's just never going to happen, but let's just have a little bit of a comparison of the two waveforms. Just trying to get these lined up. So this is the waveform from the bottom transformer. And this is the waveform from the top transformer, just to compare the two. So yeah, I'd say that's working pretty good. Alright, so let's test out one of the big transformers. This is the one with interleaved windings and two primaries. So let's see how well this one performs. Well, it's not perfect, but as you can see, I've actually got the phasing of the transistors the right way around this time because with the other transformer I didn't but that doesn't really matter so much here because that's just a test. So, you can see the waveform on one of the transistors and the other transistors got the complete opposite of that which is what we want. We want two transistors to have this waveform and the other two transistors to have this waveform and that's pretty much what we got. Okay, so I know you all want to know how the transformer well with USB cable works so, that's what we're testing now. So I'm using the screen as my primary, 
and the other four wires as my secondaries. So let's turn this on and see if it works. And indeed it does. It's about as good as the other transformers. So, yeah. I'm just going to turn the time base down a little bit. So there we go. Now I've got to try and make my choice of what I'm actually going to use. I'm a little bit of a loss actually as to what option to go with because although this one didn't really work all that well, I have two good choices that did work pretty well, which is this one here, and I'm actually surprised at just how well this one worked. So I'm not really sure whether to go with one big transformer or two small ones because all three of these worked remarkably well and this one didn't. So I'm just going to go away for a while while I make up my mind and then I'll be back. Okay, made up my mind. Going to use the two small transformers. And I decided not using trifler winding but quad fuller winding, is that a word? So we've got two, sec um, two primaries and two secondaries on each of these transformers. And how does the waveform look, you might ask? Pretty good. In fact, it's, uh, it's almost perfect. As you can see. Now, let's put this to the ultimate stress test. I'm going to take the MOSFETs out. I've replaced these MOSFETs with these capacitors here. So these are going to represent the MOSFET gates when they're under heavy load you know, due to the Miller effect. So let's see how well this handles it. Of course, I don't think it's ever going to get that bad, but it's still looking pretty good. Okay then, well, I thought I'd leave you with the schematics. Well, the changes that I made to the schematics, and of course it would be a lot easier if this wasn't on the screen as well. So this is the final schematic of the driver and control circuits. And you might have also noticed that the resistor is missing because I found out that I get a much better waveform without it and as a matter of fact all those tests you saw were without that resistor so that just leaves us with the output stage when I can find it, there it is I'm not sure if I'm going to put in these discharge diodes I might put those in, I might not I mean they weren't there in the tests I was doing but I've also noticed that there's no space between literally and one I haven't noticed that until now and all those edits I had to make to this schematic, and I've only just noticed that. So, next time, I'm going to start building the actual Tesla coil circuit. So, until next time, goodbye.